In this video we're going to learn about reflections. Let's start by reflecting this triangle here in this line. We give this line a name and it's called the mirror line. If we reflected this triangle in this mirror line, the triangle would flip over the mirror line and create a reflection that looks like this. If we move the original triangle up or down the mirror line, its reflection will follow. If we move the original triangle away from the mirror line, its reflection will also move away from the mirror line the same distance. So the original shape and the reflection are always the same distance away from the mirror line. This applies to all of the points on the shape. The original shape is known as the object. This is the one that's going to be reflected. The one that has been reflected is known as the image. Let's have a look at how we could reflect this shape here. I would reflect a shape by doing it one corner at a time. We're going to start with the corner at the bottom. This corner is only one square away from the mirror line. This means its reflection will also be one square away from the mirror line, but on the other side. The corner at the top is two squares away from the mirror line, so its reflection will also be two squares away from the mirror line. And the remaining corner is one, two, three, four squares away from the mirror line, so its reflection should be one, two, three, four squares away from the mirror line as well. So if we reflected this triangle, it would look like this. Let's try with a second shape. This time, this shape is actually touching the mirror line. The point that's actually on the mirror line doesn't need to be reflected at all. That will stay in the same place, but we do need to do the other three. Let's start with the one at the top. This one is two squares away from the mirror line, so we go two squares past the mirror line. The one in the bottom right is also two squares from the mirror line, so we go two squares past the mirror line. And the one in the bottom left is five squares to the mirror line, so we go five squares past the mirror line and the reflected shape will end up like this. Now sometimes the mirror line might be horizontal rather than vertical. Let's try this example. So we'll do this one corner at a time as well. Starting with the one on the right hand side, this is one square from the mirror line, so we go one square past it. The one in the bottom left is also one square, so we go one square. The one in the top right is three squares away, so we go three squares past it. And the one in the top left is also three squares, so three squares past it and the reflected shape would look like this. Now sometimes the mirror line isn't vertical or horizontal at all. It could also be a diagonal line that looks like this. Let's reflect this triangle in this diagonal mirror line. We will still do this one corner at a time, but there is a slight difference in the method. Let's start with the point in the top right corner. If we go horizontally, this one's one, two, three squares to the line, but we don't continue three squares in this direction. Instead, we imagine that when we hit the line, we take a 90 degree turn and go three squares down instead. So we'll need to go one, two, three. Let's try this with the other points. So this time we'll do the one in the bottom left. That's one, two, three, four to the mirror line, but then we're going to go four down. So one, two, three, four. Now we'll do the final point. This one's quite far from the mirror line. One, two, three, four, five, six squares. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six squares. So this is where the reflected triangle will be. Some people find this one difficult to spot as a reflection. I always find it's easier to see this as a reflection if you turn your page so that that mirror line is actually vertical. So if you were to turn your page like this, you can now see more clearly that this is a reflection. Sometimes we need to do reflections on a coordinate axis like this. In order to do this, we need to know the equations of some lines. We'll start with this line here. To work out its equation, we're going to look at some of the points that are on this line. Starting with this point here, this point has the coordinate 3, 3. This point here has the coordinate 3, 5. This one has the coordinate 3, negative 2 and this one has the coordinate 3, negative 8. You can see that all of the points on this line have the first coordinate 3, and that's the x coordinate. So we give this line the name x equals 3, since all of the x coordinates on the line are 3. A handy way to remember this is this line crosses the x axis at the point 3. So what about this line? Well, this line crosses the x axis at negative 5, so its equation is x equals negative 5. This one crosses the x-axis at 7, so its equation is x equals 7. 
You can even have this line here, which crosses the x-axis at zero, so its equation is x equals zero. Some people find this confusing because its equation is x equals zero, but it's actually also called the y-axis. We tend to imagine that x lines would go horizontal, but actually for the equations of these lines, all of the x lines are vertical. However, we do need to know the equations of horizontal lines as well. For example, this line here. All of the points on this line would have a y coordinate of six, so its equation is y equals six. Notice how it crosses the y-axis at the point 6. This one's equation is y equals 2, because it crosses the y-axis at 2. This one's equation is y equals negative 7, because it crosses the y-axis at negative 7. And just like before, we can even do the x-axis. So the equation of the x-axis is actually y equals 0, because it crosses the y-axis at 0. Now let's put this into practice with some questions. So a question may give you a shape A like this, and say reflect shape A in the line y equals two, and label the image B. First of all, we want to draw on the line y equals two. This is a horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at two, so it goes here. Then we can reflect the shape in this line using the same strategy as before, or we'll do it one corner at a time. So starting in the bottom right, this one's two squares from the line, so we go two squares past the line. The one at the top of the shape is five squares to the line, so we go five squares past it. And the remaining point is four squares to the line, so we go four squares past it. And this is where we would draw the reflected shape. This question said to label the image B, so we're going to call this one B. Now let's try a second example. So we're now going to reflect this blue shape here, shape C. The question says reflect shape C in the line x equals negative four, and label the image D. So we need to first of all draw on the line x equals negative four. This line crosses the x-axis at negative four and it will be a vertical line that looks like this. Let's mark on all of the points of the shape and do them one at a time. We'll start with this one in the top right, which is one square from the line, so we go one square past it. The one in the bottom right is also one square away, so we go one square past it. And the one in the bottom left is three squares away, so we go three squares past it. The one in the top left is three squares away as well, so three more. And the one at the top of the shape is two squares to the mirror line, so we go two squares past it. So the reflected shape will go here, and we've been told to label this image D, so we'll call that D. Now let's have a look at a slightly different example. So in this one we have shape A, and we need to reflect it in the line Y equals X, and we're going to label the image B. Now in the previous example, the lines were always of the form Y equals a number, or X equals a number. But this one has the equation Y equals X, and we haven't looked at that line yet. The line with equation y equals x is really just saying that the y coordinate must be equal to the x coordinate. So for example, if the y coordinate were one, the x coordinate would also have to be one. This means the point one one is on the line. And if the y coordinate were two, the x coordinate would also be equal to two. So the point two two is on the line. And for the same reason, three three is on the line, and four four, and five five, six six, seven seven, eight eight, and so on. Even zero zero is on the line, and also the negative numbers, negative one, negative one, and so on. So the line y equals x is a diagonal line that goes through all of these points shown here. So in this question, we've been asked to reflect in a diagonal line. We'll do this like we did before, one point at a time. Remember, when we hit the line, we're going to need to change direction and turn 90 degrees and then continue in that new direction. We'll start with one of the points at the top. To get from this point to the line, I need to go one square up, so I'm going to not continue going one square up, I'm going to change direction and go one square left. This point in the top right is two squares up to the mirror line, so I'll go two squares left. This next point here is three squares to the mirror line, so three squares left. This one here is two squares to the mirror line, so two squares left. This one's three squares, so three squares left. And this final one here is actually five squares, so five squares left. So the reflected shape would go here, and we'll label the image B. Now let's have a look at another example in a diagonal line. So for this question, we've got shape A and we need to reflect it in the line Y equals negative X and label the image B. So this time the equation looks similar to the one before, but it's got a negative on it, Y equals negative X. So just like before, if we think about the coordinates, what we're saying here is that the Y coordinate is the negative version of the X coordinate. So if the X coordinate were one, Y would be negative one. If x was two, y would be negative two. If x were three, y would be negative three, and so on. If you plotted all of those points, you'll get a diagonal line again, but it will go the other way, like this. Now let's reflect shape A in this line. 
We'll do this one point at a time and we'll start with the one in the top left. So to get from this point to the mirror line, I need to go two squares up. So I'll take a 90 degree turn and go two squares to the right. For the point in the bottom right, I need to go four squares to get to the mirror line. So I'll go four squares to the right. And for the final point, I actually need to go eight squares to the mirror line. So I'll go eight squares to the right. So the reflected shape and the image B goes here. Sometimes we have questions where reflections have already been completed, but we need to describe what has happened. Let's have a look at some of these. So the first question might say, describe fully the single transformation that maps shape A to shape B. Now where it says single transformation, you actually have a choice. There are four different transformations to pick from. They are rotation, reflection, translation, and enlargement. Now for this video, it's always going to be reflection because that's the point of the video. But you do need to be aware that in an exam, it could be any one of these four. So we're going to write down it's a reflection. And you actually get a mark for writing that it's a reflection. So you want to write that word down. Then we need to give the line that it was reflected in. So if we look at shape A and B, we need to try and draw on the mirror line. Now since there's a gap of two squares in between these shapes, I can be sure that the mirror line is one square in between them. So a straight line that goes down here. This line crosses the x-axis at negative 3. So its equation must be x equals negative 3. So we just need to say it's a reflection in the line x equals negative 3. And that'll get us the second mark. Now let's look at the blue shapes. So describe the single transformation that maps shape C onto shape D. So once again, we need to write down it's a reflection because that gets us one mark. Then we want to draw on the mirror line. I can see that there's four squares in between shape C and D. So if I go two squares away from either of them, I end up drawing this line here. This line crosses the y-axis at four. So its equation is y equals four. So we would say this is a reflection in the line y equals four. Now finally, onto the green shapes, we need to describe the transformation between shape E and shape F. So once again, we'd write down there it's a reflection, that gets us one mark, and then we need to draw on the line. This line is one of those diagonal lines, it goes like this. If you remember from before, this equation has the line y equals negative x. So we would say this is a reflection in the line y equals negative x. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.